Oh my gosh. Oh my God. I'm obsessed with this, you guys. This is all safety pins. It's all safety pins. Oh, Chee Mama, I am happy you're here today. This DIY is so cool and so satisfying and so custom and so everything. Uh, I cannot wait to share it. If this is your first video, I'm really happy that you found me. My name's Orly and this is the DIY designer. On this channel, I do super fun DIY fashion and personal style content. I'm really all about giving you guys the technical tools that you need so you can customize your wardrobe in any way that you want, in a way that absolutely celebrates all of the wonderful things that make you you. That's what DIY is all about. And I have an awesome online course called Style Language, which is all about unlocking your unique personal style. You have a style language, you just might not know what it is yet. It's basically four style words. Those words describe your personal style when you're feeling your best, and it is totally unique to each of us. Honestly, if you binged it this week, it's like an hour, 10 minutes total. So you could absolutely binge it and come out on the other side with your unique style language and your four words, which is super cool. Okay, so let's talk about today's DIY. Safety pins. That's all that you need are a boatload of safety pins. I'm gonna do two different versions. I'm gonna do this kind of cable knit pattern one on a white sweater, and then I'm also gonna do this. Now, this was not safety pins here in the middle, but it looked like it was to me, and it gave me the idea that like, ooh, I could do this little like X pattern, and we're gonna do the collar as well. So. Two totally different techniques. Um, I will link the safety pins that I bought below, but the biggest note I would have is just get more than you think that you need because the more you have, the more kind of like dense you can make it and the more intentional the pattern looks. Whereas if you, you have less and they're more spaced out, it doesn't quite have the same vibe. Let's get started. All right, so I thrifted this sweater initially with this DIY in mind. I thought that I would remove the sleeves and make these like Prada leg warmers. Maybe I'll still share that DIY, but I don't know, I didn't like love it. Anywho, if you decide to remove the sleeves from the body of your sweater, you're just gonna wanna get to those, that one piece that sort of connects the two pieces together. Pull them apart, it'll expose them, cut them, and then you end up with all clean finished pieces that don't end up needing to be sewn or you know hemmed or anything like that. So here is my little sweater body and these two little sleeves Maybe I'll reattach, maybe I'll save them for another DIY, put them on a jacket, who the heck knows. Okay, so I linked below all the safety pins that I got, but I would uh, suggest getting double. These are the one and a half inch, and I didn't know exactly what my plan was gonna be yet. I thought I would use the one and a half inch on all of the outer edges, and then this is a 0.75 inch for the cable knit. I got 500 of them, and again, I wish I had just gotten 1,000, because I think I would have done a couple more areas to create um, like even more of an intense effect. But basically, all that you're gonna do is pick the location on your sweater that you wanna create the design. The design itself is gonna dictate exactly where the safety pins go, so it makes it very simple and very like clean. You just wanna make sure that you're creating nice, sort of balanced curves. So that's why I sort of started with the top one, then did the middle, and then did the bottom, and I kind of fill in the space throughout. Now, I'm right-handed, and I knew that I wanted the little ball head of the safety pin facing outward, so when I did the other side, I flipped the sweater upside down so that I was working in the right angle. And there you go, I just kept on doing the same thing. It was very boring to show you, but it's a step and repeat. The only thing I'll say is, with the cable knit, you know, most of the time one side overlaps the other. And so you just wanna follow that. You wanna follow the overlap so that it looks like the safety pins are kind of going up and over each other. I decided to do the armholes and I did basically three quarters of the armhole before I ran out. I may or may not add more of those. And then I tried doing the neckline, which I ended up not really liking, so I removed it. I would just recommend being free with it. Start adding safety pins in areas that you think you might like. And if you don't like them, you can just remove them. It's no big deal. That's what I did on this area and I ended up loving it. So I decided to really go for it and do the whole thing. When you're dealing with something like this, you just kind of want to like mentally look at like, okay, where am I going to go in and where am I going to come out on each one so that I create a nice even line. So for this, there were these little holes down the center. So I took the little like stitch on one side of the hole and went in and then came out the last side of the stitch right on the other side and it made it nice and even. Okay, now for this guy, right? These were not actually safety pins, but they felt like it to me. And so I took more of this small, I think these are about, I think maybe the three quarter inch or maybe an inch, I'm not exactly sure. Um, and I did like a little X pattern. Now, the very first one you do is gonna take the longest because that's where you're gonna play around with like the right angle and how do you want them to overlap and how high up do you want them. Again, I wish that the 
white stripe here was black because I think you would have noticed the safety pins a lot more if it was like bright silver on a dark color. Um, I still think it ends up looking super cool, but keep that in mind when you're doing your sweaters that the darker the color, the more the silver is going to pop. So I did every other stripe again, cause I didn't have enough and I thought I'd make it intentional. And originally I did the entire collar. I went all the way around the back and I decided I didn't like it. So I removed the ones in the back and now I'm removing about three quarters of the front. So it's this sort of intentional three quarter collar that looks a little bit more, I don't know, a little more interesting to me. I'm going through and filling in any of the gaps here so that everything feels really dense and that's it. All right, it's been raining like cats and dogs in LA, so the lighting in here is kind of weird, but hopefully this works. This is the one that I've worn. Like I've worn it like every day. It's so cute. This obviously is gonna work long, but I'm wearing the belt from last week because I wanna make it short. There we go. This is like my style language right here. The sweater is like effortless. The pants are sexy. It's got a little bit of edge with the details. Original, cause I made it. This is like all of my words. I'm sorry. What? It is so cool. I am obsessed. I'm obsessed. I kind of want to go buy another 500 and like really finish off. I had to stop a little bit short right there, um, which is fine because that's where my arm is. So you can't really tell, but I might want to finish it. And I don't know, I might want to do something on the back, but it's so <laughs> This is one of my favorite DIYs I have done in a long time. Like it just feels like a special piece that I'm never going to want to get rid of. And I think it's way better as a tank. Like the sleeves are cool. I mean, they're pretty cool. I could always reattach them if I want. It's like, I feel like I'd wear it more like this. I'm obsessed. Um, I really hope you guys do this DIY. It is so fun. Keep an eye out for some cool sweaters. Get more safety pins that you need. That's really all that you need to do this. And then just keep in mind your style language because that's gonna dictate sort of how heavily you lean into it, how little bit of a detail it is, whether it feels a little bit more like feminine and romantic or a little more grungy. All of those things are specific to you. And when you DIY, you get to make them specific to you, which is the best part. Um, thanks for being here. I'm gonna be back with another great DIY next week. So I can't wait to see you guys. Um, I love you. Have a beautiful week. I'll see you next week.